So in the last video, um, we had a look at angles and things for the fuel pump. We had a look at where to mount our unit and we chatted very briefly about a power supply for it. The other thing we need to consider when doing um, an herbospatial installation is the internal pipe work that we're going to have inside our van. It's not as simple as, well, it can be as simple as just putting the unit in and letting air blow out of this side. You don't even have to have any ducting. You could just have this vent straight out into your compartment. It'd probably be pretty noisy because I actually find this ducting absorbs a surprising amount of sound. You do get a lot more noise off the vents closer to the unit than the ones further away. There's quite a few um, bits of information out there. I briefly mentioned um, these websites in my last video, which is definitely worth checking out. Um, we've got the Tonkis Varnish, is a fantastic resource for Airbus Spatia. I'd say it's almost better than some of the manuals um, once you've na learned to navigate around the site. It is a site that sells varnish, but there's actually a little link on the left hand side for Airbus Spatia, um, and it's just an enthusiast website. But the Technic gets lots of technical drawings, and then we can get the Marine Heater Installation Guide, which is definitely worth a look if you're thinking even of installing inside a van, uh, because it goes into much better depth about the ducting that's capable of um, using. So let's have a look at the requirements for the ducting. We need to consider uh, how big the area we're wanting to heat is. If we have our van here, this shape, or our space we're trying to heat, if I put my unit just here and have an outflow, so I have an inflow as well, um, obviously this is going to blow warm air into this kind of region of the van. You'd probably find that you'd end up with a warm spot over here and it'd be colder in the rest of this area. So one way of getting rid of that is obviously, we just add on, add on that section of the ducting, we could have a pipe that carries some of that warm air to the back here, have an outflow there, have our outflow there, and then we warm these areas, which definitely helps to distribute that heat better. I've uh, experimented with vents before, and it's definitely worth spreading them out as much as you can at either end of the vehicle. Um, otherwise you do get cold spots when it's winter. How long we can run these pipes, um, the overall kind of length from here to here, depends on a lot of things. It depends on how big this ducting is, depends on how many right angle corners we've got, if we've got connectors on the end of here, and there is a way of working this out. It's not included in the Urbospatia D2 manual, unfortunately, but what it is included in is it, if you search around the internet you'll find it dometic you'll find the marine heater installation guide which is much better detail on the d2s fours and fives and you'll be able to find something that looks like this which is the air ducting installation guide when um you can when we're considering it there's a few things to bear in mind uh, what our unit is so all of the chat that i've been doing so far has been on a for a D2 Airtronic. Here we've got a D4. Don't just turn off because this these diagrams are just used to explain everything. The values that we give for each of these individual parts um, is just ever so slightly different. And if we go to another page, I'll explain some of this jargon so we don't have to sit and uh, work it out ourselves. So the bit we're interested in is just here. It's where it says D2. So we can see the key information we need to know is how long and how many events can we have. We don't really worry about much more than that, because that's the important bit, is how quick can I get this place warm. So we need to consider how big is our ducting first off. So if we have 60mm ducting, which is I think is fairly standard, so this is the size I tend to use, um, I can have a, a maximum value of 6. That's not 6 metres, that's just using this information below, a value of 6. So let's take a minute to look at an example. I've just drawn up the lock of a system here um, that we've got. Looking at our top diagram here, we can see that any closable vents and pieces that go to them don't actually matter. Um, we don't count those in our final overall calculation, and that's just because we could close these off. So looking at this, I'm going to say that this one here is closable, which means straight off the mark, this entire piece I'm going to outline in red, we don't count towards our overall value. So we've got a heater. On that here, we've got one meter of piping. 
Um, we're going to say this is 60 millimeters, so we've got our value of 6. So our meter of ducting, that is worth a value of 1. So I'll write that in red next to it, so we have a 1 used up. Then we've got a 90 degree bend, which is on here as well. So we look down our list, we've got flexible duct 90 degree bend is a 60. So that gives us 1.2, 1 1.2. 1 then on the end, this is a rotatable vent, we'll say. Looking down here, I've got rotatable outlet. That's worth 0 0.4, 0 0.4. On my intake side, something to consider here, you might have a, uh, an intake grill, um, just a grill and connector to stop things going in there, and that's worth 1.7. 1.7, brilliant. So adding these together, we've got 1.7 value. All we do is add them up. 1.7, 2.7, 3.9. That gives us 4.3 overall. I'm fairly sure that that's the correct math. We'll, we'll soon work out here. I'm not great at maths. So 4.3, that's well within our capabilities of that. That's six side. If this was a value over um, over six, say if we had this as three meters of duct in, well, suddenly that puts us up to that's what it becomes three there. That's put us up to six point three. So this system is over the limit, so we risk burning our unit out from too much pressure in the pipe work, so that not allowing enough airflow through here to cool it down. We can still have the same system, but what we have to do is we have to tweak some things. So if we make this vent here, so it's not closable, so if that vent is suddenly one that we leave permanently open, you can see we are now in a system with open open. So after the split, after that joint where they come apart, that becomes a secondary duct. And secondary duct, looking at our little chart here, has different values to primary ducting. So if we were to consider this to be secondary ducting from here, well, we'll just say for the sake of it, this is, so it gets a value, um, 0 0.5 meters of duct in there. So that is worth a value of 0 0.5. Now if one meter is worth one, in my mind, 0 0.5 is worth 0.5. We consider this all to be secondary ducting. Well, what have we got? We've got a Y connector, a Y branch in there. So looking down my list, Y branch, 0 0.3. So 0 0.3. We've then got one meter of piping here. Well, one meter of piping is worth 0 0.3 again. So we're gonna go for 0 0.3. Perfect. The out vent, if we have a rotatable vent, is worth nothing on secondary ducting, so that's a big old zero. Three meters of pipe, that will be 0 0.9. 90 degree bend is an 0 0.8. And a rotatable out, we've already looked, is worth zero. So let's get those numbers added up and we'll see what it works out. You have to bear with me here. So we've got 0 0.6, 1.5 with that. That would be 2.3, correct me if I'm wrong. Yep, so we're suddenly at 2.3. So the same system, just there, 6.3 dropped it instantly down to 2.3. In fact, the thing we forgot here is our grill connector on the front. Just said don't forget that, so let's not forget that. That puts us up to a solid four. I thought that was quite a reduction. Brilliant. So you can see how instantly, just by being a bit canny with it, working it through, we can actually reduce those figures down. So we can have a lot of vents. We don't want too many because the, obviously if we split this pressure that the air heat is putting out below five, between five vents, we're going to get quite a low volume of air out of each pipe. We do lose quite a lot of heat in the pipe work as well itself, so we want to keep it as small as possible, but we do want to route those to either corner of our van to avoid cold spots. So we just worked through um, an example. 
The things that are worth probably adding are that I'm not a technical advisor or, or um, a workshop mechanic for Airbus Fresh or anything like that. I've just fitted a few of them personally myself in a number of vans um, and I've come to learn a fair amount from reading the manuals um, from some of the online resources that I've kind of shared with you guys. If you guys have got any questions or anything or things I've not covered, just drop me a message um, or drop it in the comments box. I'll be sure to try and fill you in or at least give you my opinion on it. If anyone's got um, anything they want to add to any of this, anything that um, they might think is different or the rest of it, um, just drop a comment. Um, I've, all the stuff I've quoted is directly from manuals, so I can't believe there's any issues, but any issues, just, just get in touch. Uh, make sure you subscribe um, if you've not checked out part one of this Technical Bits video. Um, and we'll check out the installation in a Citroen Relay van. Um, we'll cover much less of the technical stuff. We've kind of covered all of this stuff here, so it's just how to go about installing it um, and a bit of video about that. That's uh, going to be coming out in a few parts. If it's not available at the moment, click subscribe as soon as it becomes available. YouTube will notify you. Thanks for watching again. Um, really appreciate it. It's good to know that there's actually some information out there. When I came to start, it was quite difficult to get hold of um, videos or any information like that of people doing these type of installations. So hopefully this will save you a fair amount of research and effort. Cheers again. Bye.